Thank you. Thank you so much for all of you for being here. Winning the Norman Mailer Prize is a step up from the first prize that I ever won in my life, which was for a screenplay, and the prize was called Best Film in Languages Other Than Those Specified in Schedule 8 of the Indian <laughs> Constitution, <laughs> which was English. Um, it's, 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 it's wonderful to be, to be honored for writing which in my country is considered seditious and anti-national and generally treacherous. So thank you for that. Um, unlike the United States, which has been at war with several countries for several decades, even as we speak, your drones are killing people, children in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, and in Iraq. Thousands of American troops are moving into Africa to secure resources so that the American way of life might continue. But in India, the Indian government makes war against itself, against its own people. So ever since India became an independent country, it has deployed its army in Kashmir, in Nagaland, in Manipur. Kashmir, maybe many of you don't know this, but it's the most densely occupied military zone in the world. When America went to war against Iraq, it deployed 165,000 troops. But there are 700,000 Indian soldiers all year round in Kashmir. 70,000 people have been killed in that conflict over the last few years. But the Indian government has many ways of waging war. Since the early 90s, when it joined the free market and became what it thinks of itself as a superpower, one quarter of a million farmers have committed suicide because they're in debt. Nothing like that has happened in human history before. Today, India has more poor people than all the poorest countries of Africa put together. But you wouldn't know it if you read the papers, would you? 80% of Indian people live on less than 20 rupees a day, which is less than half a dollar a day. So that's the country that I live in and write about. There are, there are huge conflicts all the time, every day. And now the Indian government is planning to deploy its army in central India to wage war against 100 million Adivasi people. Adivasi people are indigenous tribal people. Why is this war going to be waged? Already there are 200,000 paramilitary troops in there, but now the army is going to be deployed. The brigades are already moving in because, as usual, in indigenous people live on very well, land full of mineral wealth. There's more than 200, more than three, four trillion dollars worth of bauxite, of, of uh, iron ore. As you know, bauxite is used to make aluminum, which is used for the manufacture of weapons. So this very poor country is buying billions of dollars of weapons from America and from Israel to deploy against the poorest people in the world. So when I came to New York, I, I came yesterday, day before yesterday, I went down to Wall Street because I wanted to see what it was. After all this, all this mining and all these wars that are being fought in India is in order that we become like you because you are the role model for the world. So I went to Wall Street to see what was this trouble in paradise? What was going on here? And I tried to make the connection between what is happening in Wall Street and all those conflicts that I have been a part of and I write about. And of course, there isn't enough time to, to say everything. But you don't have to win the Norman Mailer Prize to be able to say 
that what connects these conflicts is exclusion. In India, 100 people, the richest 100 people, own assets equal to 25% of its GDP. In America, 400 people own the wealth of the rest, half of the rest of America. So it doesn't need the Norman Mailer Prize to say that we have a problem on our hands, a problem that needs to be addressed systemically. And I can just say that no individual, no corporation can be allowed to have such unfettered wealth, such unfettered power. There has to be a cap on what corporations can have, what people can have. And so we have to put a cap on it, we have to put a lid on it. As a capist and a lidite, I thank you for the Norman Mailer Prize.